Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage former Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard. Hello, New York! Join me as I say these words. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, and that we are endowed by our Creator with certain unalienable rights, and that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. As we gather here today on this historic occasion, we stand together as proud Americans in understanding that these very rights are under attack. So we face this historic crossroads where our freedom and our future is in our hands. There's never been a more clear choice in any election in my life, and our ability to live in a truly peaceful and free and prosperous country is on the line. I love you too. And it is that love, that love that brings us together here today, that love for freedom, that love for our country and love for each other as fellow Americans, as children of God, that compels us to take action to save our country and defend our freedom. Now, this choice that we have before us is very personal to me. I'm a lieutenant colonel in the Army Reserve. I've served now for over 21 years. I've deployed to different war zones three times over that period, and I've seen the cost of war. For my brothers and sisters who paid the ultimate price, I carry their memories and their sacrifice in my heart every day. So this choice that we have before us as Americans is critical. It's important to us. It's important to those of us who serve, who have volunteered to put our lives on the line for the safety, security, and freedom of our country and our people. And it's critical to all of us. Here is the choice that we have. A vote for Kamala Harris is a vote for Dick Cheney, and it's a vote for war, more war, likely World War III and nuclear war. A vote for Donald Trump is a vote for a man who wants to end wars, not start them, and who has demonstrated already that he has the courage and strength to stand up and fight for peace. A vote for Kamala Harris is a vote for open borders, where known violent criminals and Islamist terrorists are streaming across our borders, placing us at risk. A vote for Donald Trump is a vote for secure borders and safe communities, and a confidence that he will seek out those who seek to do us harm and get them out. A vote for Kamala Harris is a vote for economic hardship, high cost of living, poverty, and homelessness. And a vote for Donald Trump is a vote for economic prosperity and opportunity for every single one of us as Americans. A vote for Kamala Harris is a vote for censorship and a complete erosion of our fundamental and constitutional rights and freedoms. A vote for Donald Trump is a vote for someone who will defend freedom and every one of our God-given rights that are enshrined in the Constitution and Bill of Rights. So the choice is ours. History will look back on us at this moment for the choice that we make. Did we choose war or peace? Did we choose poverty or prosperity? Did we choose censorship or freedom? Yeah. Our freedom and our future is in our hands. We have just a few days left 
to complete this no-fail mission that we have before us to save our country. Nothing short of our future is on the line. So now, just as we've gathered here today in this historic place and this historic time, we will gather together all across this country, people of every race, ethnicity, religion, and creed, to stand together and defend our freedom and ensure our right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Now is the time for us to send Donald Trump back to the White House to be the 47th President of the United States where we can stand together and make America great again. Thank you so much. Let's get it done. Aloha. A lot of people ask me why I left the Democratic Party. And I say, I don't leave the Democratic Party. The Democratic Party left me. This is not the party anymore of Martin Luther King, of Robert Kennedy, of John Kennedy. That was the party of peace. It was the party of constitutional rights, of civil rights, of freedom of speech. It was the party that wanted to protect and nurture the middle class. It was the party that stood up to censorship, to surveillance, that stood up to the CIA, to the military complex, military industrial complex. And it was the party that wanted to protect public health and, and women's sports. My uncle, Ted Kennedy, wrote Title IX, which protected women's sports in college. It was the party that believed in voting rights and fought for the right of every American to vote for the person of their choice. Today's Democratic Party is the party of war. It's the party of the CIA. You had Kamala Harris giving a speech at the Democratic Convention that was written by neocons, that was belligerent, pugnacious, that talked about the domination of the world by the United States through our weapons of war. It's the party today that wants to divide Americans. It's the party that is dismantling women's sports by letting men play women's sports. It's the party of Wall Street. It's the party of Bill Gates, who just gave $50 million to Kamala Harris. It's the party, and the Harris campaign is very proud that it received the endorsement of 50 former CIA agents and officers. And of John Bolton and of Dick Cheney. These are the people that gave us the war in Iraq, the worst foreign, foreign policy catastrophe that's ever happened to this country. These are the people that gave us the Patriot Act and launched the surveillance state. These are the people that are trying to undermine voting rights in this country by weaponizing the federal agencies against political candidates, including me and Donald Trump and all other political candidates that can't win an election. And instead of bringing in a candidate who wins the primaries, abolish the primaries and then pick two candidates, anoint them without receiving votes. We don't even know how Kamala Harris received the nomination. And this is the party of Wall Street, of big banks, of big data, of big tech, 
of the military contractors and the parties of Big Pharma, Big Ag, Big Food, and Big Chemicals. Is the party that's given us the sickest children in the history of the world. When my uncle was president, 6% of Americans had chronic disease, and we spent zero on chronic disease in this country. Today, 60% of Americans have chronic disease. This is existential for our country. We're spending $4.3 trillion a year, five times our military budget. 77% of American boys cannot qualify for military service because of chronic disease diagnoses. This is existential for our country. President Trump called me after, three hours after his shooting. And he said, would I come and sit down with him? And he said to me during that meeting, he said, there are some things that we can agree on and some dis we disagree on, but the landscapes on which we agree are so much larger. He said, I want to end the wars. I want to end this surveillance and censorship. I want to protect the Constitution. I want to protect freedom of speech. I want to end the surveillance. I want to end the weaponization of government against American politicians. And I want to end the chronic disease epidemic. Now, don't you think that we deserve a president in this country who's going to restore the moral authority of the United States of America? Don't you think that we deserve a president who's going to end the warfare state and rebuild the middle class? Don't you want a president who's going to put America first And don't you want a president who's going to protect our children? And who's going to protect women's sports? And who's going to stop dividing this country along racial lines? And don't you want a president who's going to end the corruption at the federal agencies, at FDA? at NIH, at CDC, and at the CIA. And don't you want a president who's going to make America healthy again? And don't you want a president who's going to make America great again? And we need to go to the polls on November 5th and vote for Donald Trump. God bless you and God bless America.